I have begun by roughly paralleling my occlusal plane to the floor or to the, the platform and um, I've tried to line up say equal guide planes on the two teeth on the two supported side. I'm going to first look at my guiding planes and I, I have a low survey line on that particular tooth and really a relatively low survey line on that particular tooth. Now, had it been that this tooth was leaning more in this direction, I would have tilted my cast posteriorly, but I would like to end up with equal guide planes on both the molar and the premolar. Now, I'll have to look at this tooth on the other side also, and again, um, it's you know, the, the survey line is right there down at the gingiva. So I think my, my um, paralyzation is pretty good. Now I'm going to look at my desires for uh, undercuts, and we indicated that this is an extension base side, so the thing we don't necessarily want to put on there is a cast circumferential clasp, even though of all the teeth that are capable, if this were a virgin type tooth, no restorations and a strong tooth, because we have so much palatal support by our major connector, I might consider a cast circumferential. But our textbook says treat the extension base, removable partial denture with a clasp that is kind to the tooth and eliminates torquing forces. So those would be the eye bar would probably be our first choice, but as I have indicated, the eye bar, if we place this analyzing rod on the facial surface of the tooth and we carry the bottom of the analyzing rod down to where that would be about six millimeters below the marginal gingiva because that would be where our infra bulge clasp actually would originate, would be about six millimeters below the marginal gingiva, then if you look at that space of light in here, that clasp, the rod is up against the tooth. In order to get into position, it would have to stand out from the tissues by that much. And that infra bulge clasp arm would irritate the inside mucosa of the lip right at the corner of the mouth. Every time the patient was speaking, it would rub on there and cause some irritation. In the maxillary arch, the canine is often precluded from using the eye bar because of that very problem <clears throat> of undercuts in that area. Now, we could probably tip our cast severely to the um, posterior in order to get that bar closer to the gingiva, but that also means that we have to put it in at a rather odd angle when we're trying to seat it in the mouth, and when the partial's all said and done and it's totally seated, it's usually pretty parallel. The ridges are parallel to the floor. So we'll also look at our second option, which is the wrought wire clasp, and we certainly appear to have a 0.02 mesiofacial undercut, so we would possibly consider that um, wrought wire clasp for that particular side. If we also tilted this cast dramatically posteriorly, let's see what would happen with our guiding planes over here. They, they probably would still be rather satisfactory. The two teeth we're going to clasp on this side are our, cat, our uh, teeth right next to the edentulous area. So we are talking about a cast circumferential clasp right here and a cast circumferential clasp right in this area. We would like to separate our retention because if we talk about rotation, this partial denture would want to rotate upward in that direction. And if there's a direct retainer back here, it would 
aid in preventing that rotation in this direction. If we wanted to rotate in this direction, it would also aid in having the direct retainer separated here. On the two abutments that are next to uh, the edentulous area on the two supported side, we would like to have a rest next to the edentulous area and the direct retainer arms coming to the um, mesiofacial of the premolar and distofacial of the molar. In addition to that, we would have a fulcrum line that goes between our molar and our canine over on the other side and we would have to have the indirect retainer and the indirect retainer will be at the position that is farthest from our fulcrum line which would lend us to feel that it's going to be on that canine. Now I'm going to go ahead and survey this cast at this position Put in my 0.01 undercut gauge and I, I will check to see if I have 0.01 undercut on this side which I do and a 0.01 undercut on this side which I have no problem. The other side would be a, a wrought wire which would be a 0.01. Now one other thought sometimes in this venture is when our fulcrum line goes across here and if this is if this is very heavy fibrous tissue, when the patient bites down on that side, that partial denture would want to rotate around that fulcrum and lift up in this direction, which means that an arm on the mesiofacial of this tooth would have a tendency to want to um, pull that tooth in a lingual direction. Now, if we have good major connector and plating on that side, chances are that's not going to happen. Uh, but another thought is the possibility of placing a raw wire direct retainer on this tooth to ease up the forces that would be exerted to that tooth. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and survey my cast. I'm going to place my lead in the surveyor with the lead just a little longer than my lead sheath and I want that clasp clamp not to be on the lead but on that metal. So we're going to start back here keeping the lead at the gingival area so that the side of the lead marks the height of contour of the tooth and I'm going to survey all my teeth. It, the rule basically in one of the texts says survey all posterior teeth and any teeth next to an edentulous area, but I like to survey everything that metal is going to cross. Again, keep your lead down at the level of the gingiva and let the side of the lead do the work for you. These teeth, as typical with maxillary teeth, tend to lean toward the um, buccal surfaces. Mandibular teeth tend to lean a little bit to the lingual. We can also mark the bony undercuts because we know our flange really can't go below that point on the side or it will be sticking out away from the tissues. So we would mark any on the undercuts. I'm going to put in my 03 undercut gauge. I'm going to find a position where the the edge of the analyte or of the 03 undercut gauge 
can make a mark in three widely spaced positions on the cast without moving the undercut gauge up or down. It has to stay stable. That way the laboratory technician can reproduce our survey. I'm placing a red line through each of these marks and putting a, an X. And I'm going to go ahead and circle them. You can circle them in blue. And now we have the cast tripoded. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and mark my O1 undercuts for my cast circumferential clasp. So I place my undercut gauge to where the rod or the vertical rod touches. And then I pull up my rod until I'm touching the tooth and I make a little mark. And I mark that as my .01 undercut on the tooth right there. Do the same on the distal facial, which is where I would like to place it. Pull it up. That undercut is awfully high up on the tooth. And I might want to consider lowering my survey line, but boy, when you do that, you have to be extremely careful because what you don't want to do is end up wiping out your O1 undercut. So we're going to probably lower that survey line because we'd like that to be more toward no higher than the middle third of the tooth, not in the incisal third. That makes the clasp very unstable. So we'll go ahead and mark our O2 undercut while we're, do while we're at it. Our O2 undercut gauge is the silver undercut gauge that you have that it has two notches on it. The O1 has one notch. So I'm going to again place the vertical aspect of the undercut gauge against the tooth, pull it up until the horizontal aspect touches the tooth and mark it. And we don't see a dramatic change in the position with our O2 undercut gauge. I mean, I automatically know that the lower one is my .02. I don't have to mark it with different colors or anything like that. Um, it's pretty obvious to me that the higher one would be my .01 and the lower one would be the .02. I'll check that O1. It just seems like I maybe didn't have it touching the side of the tooth. out where it was. It's marking right through that red line. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and plan our tentative designs, put them on paper.